Hi, welcome to another episode of Lost in Space with Montana Kennedy. Just wanted to talk to you this time about the tales of the sunfish. And a lot of what you're going to see here, this is going to be a recreation. Um, this is stuff that I actually did do, but uh, I didn't have fraps running on the system that I was using. And so this is kind of just showing you what happens. If you haven't done the escape pod commercial, oh, excuse me, the escape pod missions that goes under the title of Asteroids in the main menu when you load in, uh, what you get is you show up in this little ship, you've got an assembler, you've got a refinery, you've got a storage pod, uh, basic, just basic everything. Uh, and you show up and you've only got... A limited amount of fuel in this case I've got two hours worth of fuel and that's just sitting there in space not doing anything so uh, I've jumped in here and I've got it set up and just to uh, give you an idea you show up you've got a small amount of asteroids and you get in there and you can go in and find yourself some uranium first thing off and a lot of it's just real basic survival gameplay right at the very beginning however you end up having some issues if you try to do anything more than just sit there and mine and build and mine and build right off if you get greedy and stupid like I did the first time I played this one then things get really interesting real quick and you'll find out a little bit more about what happened to me so here I am I'm heading off towards the asteroid that's nearby shut everything off but then I realized oh I want to turn off my gravity generator that's one of the biggest wastes of power that you're gonna have if you don't need gravity turn it off it's just sucks batteries like you wouldn't believe so uh, I just go through turn off a bunch of different things save that squeeze that little bit of power out of there that I can get And so uh, you're going to see me here for a second. I head on in and trying to find a good spot near the planet just to camp out. And uh, if you take a really good look, you'll start to realize that this ship's missing more than a couple of things. This ship is missing a beacon of some sort. This ship is missing uh, one of the things you find out very obviously if you try to go and capture another ship someplace which right now uh, is pretty much the tried and true way to get through uh, vanilla survival is going through and capturing stuff in the way of civilian ships that happen through your space and so in this one I sit, I park and so I've got three days now with everything shut down the way that it is I've got three days worth of fuel but if I try to do anything at all, it's going to cut way into that. And so I'm hoping this Thursday that that door thing gets fixed. But anyway, uh, so I go around. I start looking for material I can drill out in the way of uranium. And I'm going to speed this little bit up here for you so you don't have to see me fiddling around too much. But uh, this rock, it was just kind of weird trying to go around and find some stuff. I ended up going just complete opposite way. If I'd gone around the other way, I'd have been fine. And found some uranium really quick. You'll see what I'm talking about. This is one of those cool asteroids where there's uh, just a big hole that runs right down through the middle of it. Just If I'd gone just a little bit further, I'd have come into the back end of that. And so I'm now just looking for a big black patch identifying uranium. If it doesn't come up on the radar, on you know, the sensor it'll come up somewhere else but as we go through here there we go as we go through here I end up coming in I get my material I need we end up mining it all out nice big black patch of uranium it looks like this would have been a real nice one to go ahead and save anyway and just play on but uh, so I go on and this is pretty much what happened in my original mission. Grabbed uranium, got the power back up, maybe grabbed some other materials, started refining, and then as I started to go through, 
I started thinking, huh, I haven't really played a lot of survival mode things yet. And normally when you fight, start on the survival mode, you've got a full complement of ships. You can do whatever you want to. You've got a mining ship right off the bat. And so you can just start grabbing stuff left and right. And so this time when I came in, I wasn't quite hip to what was going on. So I ended up coming in. I got my uranium. I threw it in the refinery. And here I am looking for the ship. And there she was. And so I ended up getting my uranium refined just enough. I thought, hey, I can go out and I can catch something. So I go out to catch the first thing that shows up, which was one of the civilian craft mainly because I'm also a big believer in solar power and I want to get the solar panels out there just once you get the solar panel array it starts cutting into your energy usage greatly granted right now with how things are set the solar panels there you see some of the damage as I was talking about how this thing it's it's almost like this is like a real lifeboat from something that got dinged up or attacked or blown up and as much as I kind of cringe whenever people start making up their own little folklore about whatever their particular thing is, I, I sit there and I really like that those touches that uh, the folks did when they made this game. It's one of the reasons why I hate doors. I never can get through them right. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about how what, what they did when they made this game is for things like this scenario, you're supposed to show up on this essentially a life raft rescue ship and it works for you I mean, it, besides just having all the basics you go in and it treats it as if you've never done anything before and you're coming out of some particular event they took that next step beyond just okay we'll just plop in a rescue ship so they actually make it a little bit dinged up so it actually seems like you're doing something here I am, just that little bit of uranium triples what I had in my reactor. And so I've got a decent amount of power. I'm going to go over here and check out and see what I have. There we go. And it's got knocked down to one hour. Why? <laughs> because the reactor is going full bore trying to get, I mean not the reactor, but the refinery is going full board trying to get that uranium processed. Uh, so, I mean, it's just one of those things you have to do. So if I was staying here in a real survival game, I would just be going back and forth and back and forth, getting as much uranium as I could get right off the bat, just to be able to do what I need to do. So, uh, what ended up happening to me, though, was it was about this time I saw a civilian craft way out on my radar, just kind of like what that mining transport is. And I headed out to capture it. And as you can imagine, if you don't have landing gear, you have nothing you can lock on with. And so I just had, so you can't lock on, and you can't break, and you can't stop it. I sat, and I had to go out and just match velocity and trajectory with it and kept flying back and forth and every time my little ship got more than about 40 or 80 meters away I'd pop back over to it and I'd pull it back in I'd pop back over and pull it back in and until I finally got it stopped and so once I got it stopped everything was fine I was able to finally build it and I ended up one of the first things I did after I started stealing all the solar panels off of the civilian ship and slapping them all on this thing I built landing gear. And so uh, after going through a little bit of that process, uh, eventually I ended up kind of thinking, huh, my little ship here looks like a sunfish. It doesn't look like anything like a sunfish, but to me at the time I was just kind of thinking, that's kind of a cute little ship. I've got that big fin of solar panels, which I keep meaning to add some more to, but that's not going to happen due to the nature of what uh, my current situation is with the ship and you'll find out more about that as you see future episodes of this or if you follow me on twitch you'll see exactly what's going on with the sunfish and so i headed off anyway and started doing my little adventure and you'll notice i thought 
I could just go out, do my thing, turn around and come back and take a look what's around there. I don't see any sort of a beacon telling me where the other planet is. And if there was some sort of a beacon, that beacon would give me what the distance is to what I had. And unfortunately that's not the case. And so I lost my asteroids. And here I am, my single landing gear, my array of solar panels, my beacon on there, and you can see I've started to monkey with the ship a little bit. I've added on a couple of engines, I the thrusters, I've added on a big cargo pod on the side, and right now I'm in the middle of, and this is what you're seeing right here, is just a little bit after I've just added some uh, conveyors onto it. This is right after conveyors were introduced as a working option. Um, and this is just to show you a little preview of what the ship looks like. And I'll be spinning around a little bit. I ripped off a lot of the stuff off the front side of the ship, threw on a window, because, well, the windows were introduced about that same time. And just, I mean, having that cargo pod and on the side... And the fuel time just went from seven days to eight and days, just simply as a What I'm doing right here, I'm actually that array doing ten. moving the ship around solar so panels but the solar panels will actually get the sun you'll see me trying to uh, check out my landing gear here in a bit uh, counterclockwise and my fuel time has gone from six days up to eight and I think if I remember right you see me going up to nine days worth of fuel time and that's just kind of the cool thing about the solar panels like I said for solar panels you're not going to completely knock out all the stuff a ship needs but you can greatly alleviate your power needs. And if you can maximize the power that is being used by your solar panels, I mean, if you're parked someplace and you're not going anywhere, turn your ship. Yeah, here we go. Nine and days it just worth. went to nine days. And so if you are going through space someplace, yeah, shut off your dampeners, maybe even shut off your engines, but before you get completely shut down, Rotate your ship so you're facing into the sun. It's just going to help your situation. So uh, here I am with uh, another little bit with my ship. I'm trying to get the conveyors all set up because as you start out, you've got that one little storage. You've got an assembler. It's not connected to anything. The reactor is not connected to anything. And so as you can guess, with that big cargo unit off to the side, I kind of figured that was something I wanted to have. And a couple little pieces I'm trying to put on right here, uh, you'll end up finding out that they're a little bit useless because I didn't need to have those on in the first place because the refinery and the assembler are already connected. And so this is me going through to start doing the construction of all of these. I will go ahead and skip through the boring bits. And here we are coming around with some of those, I think with my whole system is all finished up. I'm doing the final checks to make sure everything is good, nothing needs repaired, and everything looks solid. So I go down and I take a look, and I pop that open, and I can move from my character over to the small cargo container. So I've just transferred materials all the way through the entire ship. And if you're not sure how conveyors work and all the different materials and how they work on how things happen, and look, and there's uranium from my refinery automatically going over into the reactor. If you're not sure how the orders go on conveyors and uh, the both the tubes, the conveyors themselves, uh, what happens when material is done in a refinery, what happens when material comes out of a collector, uh, go ahead and click on the link I'm going to pop up here on the screen that is in the forums for uh, space engineers and it will tell you kind of what the in-out flow is for a lot of this stuff and it really is kind of organized their logic on how things happen. Also for the conveyors themselves, the sing single block conveyors, the position of those and the orientation of them helps tell exactly where things are going to go. And so there's a couple of things. If I had to turn, for example, one block in there that comes off of my small container, it probably would have sent it all the way to the big container just automatically. 
I mean, it's really kind of neat how they've got so much stuff set up. And so one of the things I also figured out is I got tired of having to access, like after I'm cutting up a ship, of having to come back, access the interface, go back, do my ship, come back, access the interface, go back, cut up the ship. And so I'm building a collector on here. And I'm going to go ahead and I build, uh, one of the things I've come to really enjoy is having uh, kind of what I've referred to elsewhere as the cone of shame. And that is just simply because I am lazy and I don't want to have to try and get exact every single time I drop my stuff in. So I have a, besides having a cheap gravity well going around my ship, I also will throw a series of angled blocks all the way around on my collector just to make sure that it's picking up everything. Just like I can sit there and instead of having to be up above a 2.5 meter by 2.5 meter square, I can be up above a 7.5 meter by 7.5 meter square. And if you've not, if you don't realize how big that is, I think it'd be pretty funny to see it measure out something that big and take a good look at what it is. So as I go through here, you'll notice I start doing a little bit of differences in color and how I've got stuff set up and different things. And my construction methods here weren't exactly the best. I ended up at one point later on, I decided to move that con that collector and you'll see how I've got this whole this whole rig set up. Everything is attached to the collector by that one angle block. And so if I remove the collector out of that system, all the rest of it just floats away. And I was able to get it all salvaged before it did float completely away. But uh, it was one of those things that had me banging my head on the desk because I didn't do what I needed to do on that. So and just be happy that I've got a lot of this stuff sped up by two because it really started to get a little bit monotonous. Uh, that and I do cut down a lot of the video that I like to show. Take out all of the slow points of me going back and forth and back and forth from whatever ship I'm taking apart or how I'm doing things. So, and then if there's anything else that I get tired of in the game, it's just the incessant grinding. I can't think of anything valid that would speed it up, but uh, probably more than anything else, it's the grinding time that makes me think about what it is I want to make, which, if nothing else, leads me to a big tip that I've got for a lot of folks. Don't try anything for the first time in survival mode. Go over into the uh, creative mode and check it out over there first. See if what you want to do actually works and to see, just to see if it'll work in principle, and then you can come over here and make it work in practice. Uh, because there's a lot of times where things just do not work. One, it, like you put, build something up, and if you're going to be spending time and trouble in survival mode, you might as well make sure it's going to work the right way when you get, get there instead of spending your time and spinning your wheels trying to get something made. I was like such a better player when I'm playing this stuff sped up by twice or even by four times. So as I go there, you can see that's a much bigger target to aim for if you're trying to look for, I'm trying to figure out right now how to place lights on that thing, which unfortunately, uh, those little deck lights you can't place in the middle of an angled piece. You can only place it on a flat piece. It would also help if I actually had some construction materials, the construction components. Uh, but you'd be amazed at how much that speeds you up, having something like the, the Cone of Shame. Just You sit there and you set that up with a little bit of a gravity well up above a collector box, I mean a, uh, up above a storage unit, and you get above those containers, you drop stuff in, and it just drops it right on in. And it helps you out so much. And the ever-present suit energy is low, warning. Yeah, I've only missed those a couple of times. So here I am, all of that stuff is done. 
and I'm starting to get into one of the next things I was wanting to play with. Uh, there's been a couple of times where I've done stuff with, this is another big helpful thing I'm messing around in uh, creative mode, is you find out what works and what doesn't, and you find out exactly how fragile these container units are. You really don't have to hit those containers hard at all to do anything. So what I'm making right here is at least across the front center, something that's going to block in that unit. And I, I'm going to, you'll end up seeing more armor around that thing as we go on. But uh, right now I've got a little wing right there and I'll build a little wing on the other side of it uh, as we go. But I start to get some different ideas. Well, I, some of the stuff I wanted, my long-term goals for this, uh, I want to get more storage, which I've done. Uh, I thought it'd be a nice idea to get a ship grinder on there, which it's not. Uh, for ship grinders, what I've started to find out is you really need a whole lot of uh, you need a whole lot of gyroscopes just to keep yourself steady, and then feed everything in uh, on a pur from a purpose-built ship. There's a couple things that might work a little bit better to help this thing, but right now that's all it is. And so I've got this these wings coming out here. The far side I wanted to add on a second storage unit which I have done. You'll see that in future episodes. Uh, this side I'm going to turn into a little uh, small hangar for a small ship which I've not done that yet but I plan to at some point. Uh, I've got the hangar. I don't have a small ship yet. Uh, and I don't want to drop too much in the way of hints of what's come up since this. But uh, as we start to go on we end up getting farther and farther along. I'm not sure why there was that little hick in the graphics, but uh, one of the other things that I wanted to add onto the ship is a whole section of front window panels. So I started removing blocks across the front and it's one of those things you get to see my ineptitude right now as I go through and try to figure out the windows. And it's just one of those little things that uh, with the windows you just have to sit there and, f and start learning which side does what uh, between the regular or the inverse. And as you go through, typically the inverted will go out in the on the inverted, you'll see that like on the outside edge of the box, you can see from the inside out. And it's like when I first put that one by one window in. I had to put it in, I had to take it out, and I had to put it back in again because I uh, put it in the wrong direction. Uh, I also started to realize that with some of the uh, complex shapes that you can make, it's not always as easy as you want to do, and you can't always get the shapes that you want to make as you go through. But uh, I want to get a nice big glass cockpit coming off to the front here. Yeah, and if if I remember, I ended up putting this one backwards. But uh, as I go through this, I get the windows put in, and I ended up uh, running out of silicon and decided at one point to start cutting up. Decided to start cutting up uh, things like computer chips and the control screens and just different things like that. And that's never a good idea, especially if you're out in the middle and you need you need other stuff. The main useful point of having the glass cockpit up there was I had a couple of pieces that weren't filled in which I ended up using to fly in and out of the ship. That was the biggest usefulness, useful side to it. I really enjoyed actually having that because it gave me a little bit better access. And If you've messed around with ships you'll see that you might already figure out that this shape isn't going to quite work as you'll see eventually when I get done. And I think I'm going to go ahead and skip forward just a little bit here, and we'll see what we can find out. So here I am knocking out my front window just because I needed to get some more glass. And at this point, it's now I've got a big, like a face guard or something, but at this point I ended up actually going back in and cutting up some other stuff. And remember, you can use your assembler to disassemble materials as well, so you can get them back down to their component parts. And this is where I start to find out my bad news on my windows. 
because I can't find a piece that's going to quite do what I want it to do. One of these days I'm going to have to sit there and just play around in creative mode just to get some stuff going on. So uh, here I am just flying around the ship a little bit. You can kind of see what the current status is. There's still blocks I've got to put back together and there's still different things. And you can see as you look around, as I'm looking around right now, it's just like there is nothing anywhere nearby. And I have no idea how far away I am from the uh, asteroids I started out at. And I have no idea how I'm going to get back there. And come to find out, I'm pretty far away. Because what I started to figure out is when I started just shadowing one of those ships, we just sat there and just kept coasting and coasting and coasting. And right now you can see, yeah, I've got about 15 days worth of power. It was showing my solar panels were covering up, taking care of most of that power. Yeah, and turning off the gravity and stuff gets me down to under 7 kilowatts. And one panel at full power is going to be 7 kilowatts, just under. So, uh, getting that gravity, that's a big part of it. You knock the gravity off. So right now I've got uh, 16 days worth of fuel time. You knock the gravity off. And what I figured out is when the fuel time shows 0 seconds, that means it's essentially it's to infinity. And you can see power usage is 0.13%. So I'll show you more. You'll see some really crazy stuff coming up. Good luck and hope you have fun in the game.